Hey fellow marketers, Professor Walters here, and today we're in beautiful Savannah, Georgia in Forsyth Park. And today we're gonna to talk about our growth strategies or the Ansoft matrix. Because a lot of companies aren't sure is how do we grow our business? How do we make more money? Well, this is actually a matrix that I'll use with actually some of my clients. We're like, look, let's just take some of the basics. Let's just go and figure out this. how can we sell more of our, our old products, the stuff we already have to our current customers, but also how can we sell our old products to some new people that are out there? But also we gotta think about is what kind of new products should we develop for our old customers? customers and are there new products we can make for new customers out there and that's the whole idea and the whole premise of this Ansoft matrix okay or this growth or these growth strategies as we like to call them and so when we divide it up you're gonna divide it up by old products versus new products and old customers versus new customers okay and so the first one I want to talk about is what's called market penetration and market penetration is when you're selling more of your current products to your current customers. Now I'm not gonna say old products to old customers because that might people feel bad, but like, look, it's all about how can I sell more Big Macs to those people that already buy Big Macs? How can I sell more plane tickets to people that are already flying with Delta? What can I do with that? And so we're just trying to kind of inspire increased consumption by our old customers, okay? So what can we do to do those things? Well, one thing you look at are loyalty programs. And how many of you have a loyalty program that you go to that store consistently because you get a 10% discount or something like that, right? I mean, I've got my Target card, so I got my 5% off. Every time I go to Target, I've got my Delta Airline miles because every time I fly with Delta, I collect miles to so get free trips. You have those things. And so by offering that loyalty program, it really inspires people to come back, your old customers, to buy your old products products again because I'll buy another flight to Savannah I'll buy another flight to Atlanta I'll buy another flight to Italy because I've enjoyed my purchasing with them and they're giving me a deal so you know what with this loyalty program with the deal I'll take it okay now another thing you might want to look at in terms of increasing this market penetration or selling more of your old products to your old customers is giving your customers more opportunities to buy so McDonald's might do this when they open their restaurants up 24 hours or maybe their drive through is open 24 hours so people can buy it more often. Look, it's available for them not just from 6 in the morning till 10 at night, it's open 24 hours. So we're giving them more opportunities to buy. Also, it could be developing a website to sell more of that old content to your old customers, okay? So you can have those things. And that's why if you look at it, those online purchasing, a lot of people that are buying online are people that used to buy in the normal store, but we're still our old customers buying our old products. So we have those things. Now, I know when I say website stuff, you're like, wait, couldn't anybody be a new customer and find your stuff on your website? Yes, they can. And what's important to know about this Ansov matrix, this growth strategy matrix, is some ideas will actually be in multiple parts, okay? It could be that the online sales, yes, is great for us to sell to you know our old customers, but it's also a great way to go to our new customers, okay? Now, the next kind of quadrant I wanna talk about in here is what's called product development. So product development is when you're developing new products to sell to your old customer. That's why you're doing lots of marketing research to understand what are your customers' needs? What are your customers' wants? What are the products that we could develop that they might want to buy? So for a restaurant, we might talk to our customers and see that, look, they want more healthy alternatives. Okay, well, what if we made a salad, uh, more salads for you? Or might, what if we made vegan options or we had some gluten-free options? Would this be something that works? And you're creating these new products to tailor to the needs and wants of those old customers. So you're making something new for those old customers. That's why if you go to like a McDonald's, they'll have that little review on the back of your, you know, your receipt. They'll say, oh, fill out the survey and get a free Big Mac or free, I think it's quarter pound or something like that. They'll do that so they can find out more from their old customers, but what new stuff they should have out there, okay? A thing that we do on our travel channel, we'll be like, hey, look, viewers of our fellow travelers, where do you want us to go next year, right? And so we'll ask them, ask our fans where we should go so we can go and film there and make videos for them. So they'll want that new product, i.e. those new videos from that new destinations for our old subscribers. So you do see those things. Now the important thing about this product development part that you really need to think about is you really need to have a good relationship with your old or current clients in order for them to want to share information with you. Because if you have a bad relationship with them, they're not gonna share you their wants and needs and stuff like that. I mean, think about it your best friend you share your deepest darkest desires with and your your secrets and stuff like that some person you don't like you don't tell them anything 
So make sure you do have that really good relationship with those current clients because then they'll be sharing their information more with you and also more readily with you so you can get that and come up with those ideas for those new products to make money to sell them to your old customers. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is what we call market development. So here what we're doing is we're selling our current products, like our old products, but we're selling them to a new market or new clients, okay? So what we kind of see with this, for a lot of companies when we're trying to find a new market, we look at similar markets we already kind of work with, okay? So my buddy Culver's, okay? I love Culver's restaurants. It's a Wisconsin-based, you know, fast food place that makes great butter burgers, you know, cheeseburgers and stuff like that. And they got all that Wisconsin cheese curds and stuff like that. And as they expanded, they kind of expanded in the Midwest, right? We're gonna go to, you know, Minnesota and Illinois and stuff like that because we kind of know this market. And that's what you'll see is companies will expand the things they know. That's why that good restaurant opens up a second restaurant in the same town because they already kind of know the clientele. It's a similar clientele on the south side of town as the north side of town. It's pretty similar. So we're moving to that new market that way because those people are kind of familiar with our type of products and we're also kind of familiar with those type of customers. So you kind of look at that. Now, another thing you might look at is your market development. Yes, I, I know I just said, you know, move to a similar market, but you can have global or domestic expansion anywhere. And the thing is, if you're going to do that global expansion or that domestic expansion to markets you're not really sure about, research really becomes very important. What do people really value? What's gonna be that value proposition that's really gonna resonate in this new market? Do we need to have, figure out is, what's the value proposition from our old product that's really gonna resonate with this new market? Because that's what we need to be selling to them. That's what we need to be talking to them about. Because what happens is if you're trying to sell something that's not important to people, like, look, the fact that this is a nice warm sweatshirt that you can get at waltersworld.store, the warmness isn't really gonna sell well in Portugal because in Portugal, it's not cold. It's warm there. They don't need warm or, you know, cold weather clothing. So what I need to sell to them is like, look, if you're going to go traveling to someplace cooler, like going to Switzerland to see your aunt or, or heading to Newark to see your cousins, you might want to have a quarter zip that's going to help you fit in just right with the other Americans and other Swiss people that are there. You know, you're going to have something else you're kind of focusing on. Okay. So make sure you're looking at that. And the thing is, when you're looking at this market development, you're not always looking for new clients in terms of brand new people that never bought from you before. Sometimes what it is, is you're getting people or you're targeting previous customers, but in completely new situations. So if you look at Taco Bell, Taco Bell started selling breakfasts. And the thing is the people that go buy Taco Bell breakfast, they probably bought Taco Bell dinners before, but Taco Bell never had breakfast. So those people were never breakfast customers, but now we can target them as breakfast customers with our breakfast burritos and stuff like that. So that's another thing you can kind of think about is targeting Yes, it's the same client, but it's a new situation where we're shop they're shopping with us, so we can look at that, okay? And then the fourth and last one I wanna talk about is what's called diversification. Here is when we're developing a completely new product for a completely new set of clients. So this would be something like when Microsoft came out with Xbox. Microsoft did not make console games, okay? They did not have gaming systems and stuff like that. Also, they did not sell to gamers, right? So you got a new product and a new set of customers. So you do that. And the thing is, when we do this diversification, okay, we really are a lot of times reaching out to a completely unrelated market to what we were doing before. So it can be very scary because you know what? It doesn't always work out. Ask Circuit City, when they branched out of just selling DVD players and VHS players, it got a little troublesome for them. So you have to think about those things. But the thing is, some companies really branch out in diversification because they see it's a way for them to make more money, just like all four of these things I'm talking about. So you look at things like TV channels, A&E, and the History Channel, and the Travel Channel. I mean, let's look at the Travel Channel. The Travel Channel doesn't have anything to do with travel anymore. It's about paranormal stuff like ghost hunting and stuff like that. Why? Because more people watch ghost hunting and we can make a lot more money on ghost hunting videos than we can on travel videos for beautiful places like Savannah, Georgia. And so they do that. I mean, think about it. When was the last time you saw a history show on the History Channel? No, it's more reality shows and stuff like that. So you got to think about those things. And the thing is, companies are constantly looking for new ways to grow their business, whether it's current customers and new customers or, or old products, new products, all kinds of things like that. So really have to look at it in terms of when we're developing these new products, is it gonna be good for us in the long term or is it gonna hurt us overall? Because maybe we could make a lot of money in a short period of time, but will it hurt us in the long run, okay? If if we're Porsche and all of a sudden we sell $50 Porsches instead of $50,000 Porsches, yes, we'll sell a lot of Porsches, 
But in the long run, will people ever want to pay $50,000 again for a Porsche? You have to think about those things. And the thing is, the market you're in or the industry you're in really may dictate how often you need to change products or come up with new products. Because if you look at it in terms of the fast food industry, they're always coming up with new products. We need something new to entice people to come in because once I get my impossible burger, someone else will have the even more impossible burger. Or when we put bacon on something, everyone else will put bacon on something. And so we're constantly trying to come up with new stuff. And so really you have to think about that in terms of you know, what is happening in our industry? How are we gonna survive? And part of that is developing new products and new services and getting out to new customers. But also sometimes that means we gotta do a better job of selling what we already make to the customers we already have. So I hope this helps you have a rough idea of some of the different kind of overall growth strategies that you can kind of look at. I mean, I know for me, this is one of those things I go see clients, I pull up my wallet and I'm like, look, Boom, we're gonna come up with seven ideas for each one of these segments. And it really works really well for like idea generation. So I hope this helps you give you some ideas of some things you can do to help grow your business. And if you're studying for an exam, I hope it helps you study for your exam and you're really well on it. Anyway, I wish you all the best and good luck growing your business any way you can. Bye from Savannah, Georgia.